this is the second of four videos about the consonants in English. These videos focus on the science of pronunciation, so don't worry if you find a lot of the information difficult and confusing. I will do my best to explain it as well as possible. In episode 3, we learned that there are three ways to put the consonants into groups. Voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. I discussed the first two groups in the previous episode. Today, we will learn about the third way to describe consonants, their manner of articulation. So, let's get started. We've previously learned that consonants are made by blocking, or at least limiting, the flow of air as it travels from the throat and exits the mouth. Voicing describes whether the two doors in the throat are completely open or mostly closed. Open creates voiceless sounds, whereas mostly closed creates voiced sounds. The place of articulation describes where the air is being blocked or limited in the mouth. The third way to group consonants, the manner of articulation, describes how the air is being blocked or limited. There are five manners of articulation to make the English consonants. Here is the table that we saw in the previous episode. Along the top of the table are the places of articulation. Down the left side are the manners of articulation. Finally, if there are two consonants in the same box, the top consonant is voiceless and the bottom consonant is voiced. We'll learn about the first manner of articulation, plosives, in this episode. To make a plosive sound, we must completely stop the airflow and then suddenly restart the airflow. There are six plosives in English. I will now say them along with two example words. P, poke, rope, b, boy, robe, t, take, wrote, d, day, road, k, cake, back, g, Gash. Log. You can hear the flow of air stop for a short time and then suddenly start again. In fact, the reason they are called plosives is because the restart of the airflow is sudden and explosive. In other words, the restart is an explosion of sound. In contrast, consonants like s or all do not have a sudden stop and then restart of the airflow. So, in words like sold, loss, leaf, roll, the air never stops completely. Now, please answer these questions. Please pause the video while you decide and continue when you are ready. Here are the answers. To properly describe consonants, we need to put the three ways to describe them together. This gives us the complete phonetic description of a consonant. We first say its voicing, then its place of articulation, and finally its manner of articulation. Remember that there are six plosives in English. Here are their complete phonetic descriptions. Is a voiceless bilabial plosive. B 
is a voiced bilabial plosive. T is a voiceless alveolar plosive. D is a voiced alveolar plosive. K is a voiceless velar plosive. And G is a voiced velar plosive. So, we know that their manner of articulation is the same because they are all plosives. However, we can still put them into different groups, either based on voicing or on their place of articulation. In terms of voicing, p, t, k are all voiceless, whereas b, d, g are all voiced. In terms of place of articulation, p, b are both bilabial, t, d are both alveolar, and k, g are both velar. Based on what we've learned so far, we can now explain how each sound is created. For example, p is voiceless because the two doors in the throat are open and so do not vibrate when the air moves through the throat. It is bilabial because the air is stopped at both lips and it is a plosive because the lips quickly close and then suddenly reopen to cause an explosion of air. Here are some minimal pairs. Pie, by. Rope, robe. Staple, stable. Tuck, duck. Right, ride. Came. Game. Duck. Dug. Now, please pause the video and say these minimal pairs yourself. Can you see what exactly is different about each word in the pair? In each pair, the voicing of one plosive has changed. I have a question for you. Do you think it is easier to hear the difference between the pairs when the plosive that changes is at the beginning of the word? Usually, learners of English find that when the plosive is at the end, it can be difficult to hear exactly which plosive is used. This is because in a normal conversation, we don't emphasize the plosive at the end of a word. For example, rope, robe, duck, dug. This means that many learners of English might not be able to hear the difference between these words if the plosive is weak at the end of the word. If you have trouble with this, then I recommend that, instead of only listening to the consonant at the end, you can also pay attention to the length of the vowel in the middle of the word. In general, the vowel is often shorter before a voiceless consonant and longer before a voiced consonant. Listen again to rope, robe, duck, dug. Can you hear that the vowels are longer in robe and dug? Now, it's your turn to do some practice. In this exercise, I will say 10 sentences and you need to decide whether the correct answer is A or B. Let's go. One, can we have a look at your cart, please? Two, it was raining so hard that the girl was sopping. 3. They were talking about stabling them. 4. He spends hours riding every day. 
Five. Where were the bills? I remember putting them on the desk. Six. Did you say the man hid the dog? Seven. The boys enjoy praying. Eight. I can see the new teacher likes his new glasses. Nine. How will the girls clean them? Ten. They will have to try it. Here are the answers. This is the end of episode 4 in chapter 1. In episode 5, we will learn about the next two manners of articulation, fricatives and affricates. Thank you for watching.